This is uh, July 8th, 2015. It's time to mow this clover again. For you guys that plant annuals, you don't have that problem. You can't mow, you, you don't mow your annuals. But with the perennials, they do require a lot of maintenance and you've got to watch the weather. We've got a cool, overcast, cloudy day today. We don't want this to be shocked. If it was 100 degrees, we wouldn't be mowing. But we'll, as, I'll pan around here in a minute. You can see it's all uh, flowering right now. We want to chop that top off to keep that growth new. Um, we'll, we'll get a uniform uh, growth going. It's already established, as you already know. But mowing is really critical on your clover. That makes it, stimulates its new growth. You just can't let it grow up because it actually, even though it's white-tailed clover, it does lose a lot, some of its drawing power. Now remember, this stuff is in the 30, 35% protein level. That's really good. And we crop this top off, probably be, it may be the last time we mow it. Depends on how much rain we get. But we got three days of cool weather coming in. We've got two days with 50% chance of the rain. And then it's going to get hot again. So we don't want to be mowing it when it's hot. Annuals, you don't have to mow. Perennials, it's a must that you mow. That will stimulate the growth. And we'll pan around here and show you what we're looking at. You can see how high it is up on the tire of that tractor. Uh, and you can see all the flowering. We want to chop all that off. There are some broadleaf weeds in there and that will set them back and hopefully kill them out. Uh, I sprayed it with a, a rest and slay, but uh, you know, it's, the mowing really goes helpful when you're doing that. Now, I sprayed these here with uh, slay two weeks ago, and you know, they're a little tall, so we're going to chop those uh, weeds off because they're a broadleaf. I can see over in here where the uh, slay did its job, but you know, Sometimes it, it, it's just where we spotted it, right there. You can see the brown. That's your sleigh at work. But I didn't do the whole field. I just did the edges. And everywhere I did it, it, uh, you know, did its job. But if you missed a spot by doing that, these weeds weren't up here. Right here are some uh, broadleaf weeds. And they're only a few feet away from these which I hit these, and these apparently weren't out of the canopy of the clover. So, uh, let's get to mowing and uh, get this show on the road. Here again, you notice I got the mower. It's going to be set up as high as it can go, and I'm going to drive backwards when I mow this. That way the mower is mowed it before the tires run over it. You notice I got sort of wide tires on here, and they'll pack it down before the mower gets it and then when I come back if I'm going forward so I will back up and mow it continuously in the reverse position.
pretty cold, but the tops are propped off. That's all you need. Now what you're going to notice here, I'm going to show you up close. When you put that sleigh on, it will discolor some of the foliage on the clover. But th that doesn't kill it. But it does turn it a little brown, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You notice that redness is brownish. That's from the sleigh, application of the sleigh. And as you notice, it killed sort of the flowers over here, but it will not kill the, the perennial, the clover. It does put a little shock value on it. But here's something to keep in mind. I sprayed all these weeds that are adjoining right up to the uh, food plot because that's the seed bank that's going to blow in here. So you try to kill that off also. But that little bit of browning that you're seeing there, you're going to mow that off and uh, it's not going to be a problem. But if you see that, don't go into a state of shock that you killed your clover because that's just sort of a characteristic. Soybeans do the same thing when you spray a herbicide on them. They'll go into a little shock, kills the weeds, the beans come back just fine. Just a little tech tip so when you get out there. But there's a broadleaf weed right there that grew up since I sprayed because uh, it was down under the canopy. You can see the spray was right here. You can see where, where it actually got sprayed. Apparently this was down under here and it canopied it over, and then it just let it grow on up because it never got hit with the sleigh. But you can t tell the rest of the clover did. But, uh, that's the, another thing. It's really nice to get after those uh, annual weeds as soon as you can. But uh, as you notice, there's a lot of flowering here. These weeds up in here, they've been hit with sleigh. That's why they're all turning yellow. But you want to kill them as much as you can along your food plot because that's where the weed seed comes from. So I better get to, I better get back here and get to mowing. You know, on the onset, I was going to back up and mow this, but I noticed something was happening and I think it was a negative. Just to show you that I learned stuff right along with you. And I'm going to show you what was going on as I was backing up. Now you can see where I was backing at, down through there, what it was doing as I was going backward, the mower was packing this residue down. It was cut, and then the rear tires would go over it and smash it down. You don't want that, you want the ox oxygen to be out in the sunlight to get there. So I had to reverse and go forward. That way when the mower's going forward, as the wheels drive over it, as you'd know, it would lift the, lift the residue back up and leave less of this matting. You don't want that matting. That'll be all brown and dead. And uh, it'll be uh, a deterrent for new growth. So like I said, learn something new every day. I want to share my mistakes right along with you. And, but I caught it soon enough, and um, like I said, I was packing this down as I was backing over it. When I go forward, it'll lift it up and let it have more oxygen. Just something I learned right along with you. So, like I said, this is a, uh, about to be a no bullshit uh, YouTube channel. And uh, sometimes, I don't even do it right. Yeah, this little segment right here. But for all you people that are overly scent cautious. I can't believe far from country deer, people walking around with rubber boots, rubber suits. Might as well put a condom over your head and go out in the woods. Uh, this is um, July 8th. There's people who are saying, oh, don't leave any scent in the woods. Hanging stands right now. Really? I got a tractor sitting right there, probably one of the biggest scrapes in Clark County. I want to document that, July 8th, as we progress into the rut, when the deer really get moving, they probably ain't even on your farm right now, and you're worried about scaring them off. <laughs> Farmers are out mowing hay, spraying, doing whatever they do in regular agriculture cups. You, you, way too much emphasis on scent control, friends.
Anyhow, that tractor's sitting right in that scrape. I'll bet you there'll be 50 bucks that use that scrape. <laughs> it's 50 bucks, that's a play on words. It does. Anyhow, in the summertime, you, you're just fooling yourself and trying to talk over your head when you're talking about, don't leave any scent in the woods. You know how many times it's going to rain between now and hunting season? But you get guys that actually document and state that when they go into their woods right now, for whatever reason, they wear scent control. Like, I'd rather be wearing bug control. <laughs> okay, that's enough rant. Yeah, that part about scent control, you know, some people do get concerned about it, but if you really want to do something that control your scent, you can see the tractor in the background back there. You mow your trails out, mow some of those trails out, getting to your stands and stuff like that. And that gives you access, and the foliage is not going to grow back up. You can see how high it is on each side of, of this uh, trail. And once you get this mowed down, then your clothes won't be rubbing on it, and you'll be less likely to leave scent. Like, uh, um, that's a big deal today, because it's a big product pusher. But if you use the wind and you got any woodsmanship skills, uh, that's what you should be relying on. Unfortunately, our, our society is generating more toward uh, technology than uh, common sense. Uh, walk around with their hands, or I don't. A lot of people walk around with their brain in their hand. And, uh, but anyhow, mow those trails down. They'll stay mowed down clear into the hunting season because the sunlight can't get in there. And uh, that way, like I said, if you're scent cautious, that will help in that uh, demeanor. And you can see how thick off to the right that would be and off to the left. Uh, and right down the middle is the trail and that way once you mow that down it's going to stay down that level so you, you're not subject to be rubbing your clothes and stuff like that. And it gives you a lot better access to do some quick scouting you can traverse through there without busting brush. Now you can see that left you a maintained trail that you can walk down through here and you won't be touching all this residue. Other than that, you'd have to traverse through something that thick. That would have a tendency to uh, spread scent if you're worried about it. But right here, you know, the only thing that's going to be touching that is going to be your boots. Here's another tip for you. You see that big old weed right there? Don't ask me what it is, I don't know. But we're gonna go over there and break it down because once that blooms, that's gonna be sending all kinds of pollen right over here on the food plot. So, bear with me. Yeah, you know, we'll get this thing broke off. That probably just alleviated 10 million seeds because as you notice, it's starting to bloom there and with the southwest wind, it would just scatter that. So if you see any weeds that aren't exactly on your food plot, you also want to eradicate them as much as you can. What you're looking at is a deer trail. And we're going to try to open that trail up. Yeah, as you can see, this is really thick. And it meanders up to a large cornfield with beans last year. This is how those deer can exit that field, wood ticks. Uh, anyhow. We're going to open this trail up and make it more accessible for them so the does will have a less hard time getting through there. And we're only going to go through there with that small mower and try to weave in and out of there. And like I said, right there, if we can get this trail opened up, as you can see how thick it is right there, but you can see the trail going up through there, about like a bear trail in Canada. And I think I can weave my way up through there real cautiously. 
and just mow that understory so it'll make it more like a super highway. So deer are just like humans, they, they'll take the least resistance there and uh, they've been using it already so they know where it's at. So we'll just try to follow it on up there. Okay, what we just did, we had success cutting that path up there. Now, what's going to happen, the deer that feed on this field or come onto this field are going to funnel up that trail because it's broke. And fortunately we didn't break the tractor doing anything. Got a little blood on the arm, but that'll... Uh, anyhow, that's some things you can be doing right now to enhance your stand placement. And I want to show you that up, up the trail up here. Now this was all we need, just one 48 inch path. You could, you could even do it with a machete. It, you know, it depends on how hard you want to work. But if you clean that out, it don't have to be, you know, super clean. Just uh, a broke trail. That way, the does are going to get acclimated to it. They're already using this trail. Uh, I seen them using it last year. This is just going to enhance the use of it because you can see on both sides it's still thick. Now, I'm not going to even try to get all this brush out of here because the deer can walk right by it. Besides that, it's all covered with thorns. That's what got me in the arm. Yeah, this filming can be a pain in the butt sometimes. Tripods, doing it yourself. But I'm trying to do this to share some knowledge with you, how what you can be doing. And now, keep in mind, it's only about 60 degrees, and this is in July. You would not be doing this if it was 100 degrees 70% humidity in July, uh, but I elected to go ahead and blaze this trail and I'll show you on up here Like I said, all you have to do is get it opened up and the deer will traverse it. They'll find it. They already were using it and uh, We just enhanced it made it a little more refined and when those bucks start roaming They're not they're like say they're like they're like humans they're, They don't want to have to spend more energy than they need to so they're not going to have to bust brush and all that and this gives the, the does a good avenue to be chased down too. Uh, it's just things you can be doing that will enhance your uh, success rate possibly. No guarantees but it's better than doing nothing and it's you know it's not obtrusive at all on the timber because this was just weeds that you were mowing out of here and uh when we get up here, I'll show you what I did. You got to always be thinking. You can't just be sleeping and you, you, you got to try to figure out how it's going to enhance and what you're trying to enhance. So I'm going to show you right now. Uh, it's got this path cleared out. Now, I got a big oak tree right there. It's on the east side of the trail. And that's going to let me be able to hunt it on a southwest wind. Would be taking my scent that way. On a northwest wind, it would be going straight behind me. The deer traverse either one of those winds. With the northwest wind, they'd be going up to this cornfield. Or, you know, coming back from it. Southwest wind, either way. That tree right there is a dynamite tree. It's big enough. I can get high enough in it, it'll cover up your silhouette. The trail's been broke on the 8th day of July. Uh, it'll give you a good, there's nothing going to grow up in here. Uh, that's going to be intrusive to your shot. But that's just some things that you can be doing. But like I said, the only reason I'm doing this today is because it's, it's an overcast, really cool, unexceptional July day. You couldn't do this on a normal July. But with that said, that's why you got to take advantage. Every advantage that you get from Mother Nature, you've got to take advantage of it. Whether it be the rain coming in or the temperatures that you can work in your timber and get some field work done. You've got to take advantage of all that. You have to be connected to the earth. You, you just can't be walking around on it and existing. You, you have no feel. So if you can feel Mother Nature, work with her instead of against her. Now you're going to notice we didn't mow clear to the edge of this field. There's already a trail there. And there's a reason for that. I'll take you out here and show you. Okay. 
we went from the Whitetail Institute clover field to this huge, huge cornfield. Two food sources. We mowed the trail. Now here's a here's a tip for you. You don't want to let everybody in the neighborhood know what you you know uh, do their homework for them per se. I'm going to show you something. Now when you're walking down this mowed trail that I have on the property line, you're walking down there and everything's hunky dory, hunky dory. You know, it's just all blended in. I didn't mow out here. The trail is back in there about four or five yards. The deer know where it's at. You can sort of see where it's at. But there was no use of doing any obstruction out here to give that your work away. That way the deer know it's there. You don't need to alert fence setters and walkabouts uh, on your plan. So just a tip. And I think I better get out of here because that sky looks like about any time it's going to start raining and I got to get across the Missouri crossing. Yeah, here's what the deer is going to see. It's all dense cover on both sides, really dense. If they're eye level, they're going to look left, right. They're not going to see anything. I got a big, I got my big oak tree right over there. They can come trotting up in the evening or come back in here in the morning. Northwest, southwest wind tree tree stand and they're going to feel real secluded in here uh, we haven't done anything other than just broke a 48 inch trail in here and like i said you can do that with a machete or you know basically a machete but done it but uh anyhow and you want to leave it as rough as you can but it's definitely defined now and like i say you've seen what it went to so you got two excellent food sources uh, winter one, both of these would be winter. Turkeys will travel this too because now it's opened up and they can come right through here. So it would be a good place up on that other end to set up your turkey blind. But, uh, I'm going pretty fast, just hope I can get out of here before it rains. Well, sometimes doing that timing, <laughs> minutes. Okay, that's it. And you can see where they're coming back down to, the Whitetail Institute, Clover.